How do you think he was dealing with all of the pain and injury? Well, he was definitely not going to physical therapy or uh, exploring yoga opportunities. I was popping heavy, you know, prescription pills, man. I was popping perks and like that. I'm Nick Gates, so I go into a doctor's office. Oh, give me 30 rocks sets. And then they would do them to you. It was crazy. And like, I, I'd never been a druggy guy ever. And then like, you know, when you don't have them, you're like, whoa, what the f is that? At some point, Oxycontin got hard to get because it's very expensive. He can walk down the street and get heroin for $10 a bag and get all the same effects and get more of it. How much of his income would you say would go to drugs? All of it. Definitely all of it. You know, I looked at him like a guy who was in trouble and he had no choice, and now he's in this really bad situation. It is what it is. I mean, he was an addict. That was basically his life. And here we go, fans. Our main event tonight. As Nick Gage descends deeper into addiction, his career and his relationship with his brother Chris begins to deteriorate. Face to face in the ring, Chris's anger and frustration is about to erupt. Uh, let's just put it this way, man. I went out there and I wasn't on top of my game and I just didn't remember how to do stuff, okay? I guess my brother was a little upset in the ring, so he said, wait the up and literally slapped me like a Current champion, Justice Payne. So I'm like, damn, man, what the A softball. Justice Payne with that hard left to the head of his brother. The match started, and a few minutes later, Chris just grabbed him and put him in his finisher, the pain thriller. His pain thriller! Oh! You gotta be kidding me! What? Pretty much dislocated, almost broke my shoulder. I was very, very upset about that. That was very weird. It was like at the beginning of the match, like, aren't you gonna have a match before you start working towards the finishing sequence? After falling out with his brother, it seems Nick has reached rock bottom. But things get even worse when his mother loses her battle with breast cancer. And how did that affect you? Oh, uh, uh, not good, you know? Now that my mom died, I didn't give a man. I didn't really care. And then I was starting to, you know, starting to get into that you know? bad combination, bro, you know? Over the next few years, Nick spirals further into desperation and finds himself on the verge of homelessness. So at this time, I pretty much didn't have no friends or family no more, you know? My mom passed away, my dad passed away. I didn't talk to my brother. I didn't talk to nobody, man. I was going out of town, and for some reason, my trip got cut short. You know, I walked up to my door, and my door was like, unhinged, open, and I was like, you know, is, is there somebody here? I saw two people sleeping on the floor, and I was like, oh my God, that's Nick and his girlfriend. And, I mean, I was pissed. him, man. Kicked me out of his house, it was 10 degrees out. So now I'm angry and upset, and I need money, and I got nowhere to go. So that leads to, you know, the day of. I need the money, man, and I'm freezing, and everybody's kicking me out, so let me go get mine. So I'm walking down the street, and I see this bank. I look around, and I'm like, ah, and I, and I, and, and I left that out. So I'm walking down the street like, man, you yeah. So I showed up at the next bank, and I went right in that man. I wrote the note, handed it to her. I have a gun. Give me all your money. temper a little, you know, just take it too long. She handed me the money, and I ran all the way to my boy's house, man. 
my front door opened. He just walked into my kitchen and dropped a bunch of money on my kitchen counter. And I was like, you know, what is that? He said to me, I just robbed a drug dealer. And then I looked at the money, and we're talking brand new, crisp $20 bills. And I said, did you just rob a bank? 